and your white emerge. Dawn fur, monster, conquer like Genghis. Doc Strange's powers devour each flower on earth. Vegetarian, very scary when tipsy off Exclur, extra terrestrial ancestors from Orion. Ships flying and abduct small humans and cattle. Words baffle, bat full of arrows in quiver. Sip rivers, drink oceans, stop the rotating earth wind. I speak, the stars are my jewelry, the night is my robe, the wind is my clothes, I float when it blows, earth on my sneakers, dine on a herd of zebras, my minions, nine Indians, chant in a small circle, talk to spirits, my thoughts too vivid, of course you hear it, it comes through your speaker, UG, your flow is weaker. This is from 94, right? This shit right here is from 94. It was the new music seminar lyricist lounge. If you could get a get a peek, get a peek. That's this might be on eBay next week. My name is on it. It looked like a credit card. 1994. UG. Did you get a piece of that? I'm not hugging light skinned people no more, man. Look at that. I got rouge all over me, dude. That's that stuff they put on their face. I ain't hugging no more light skinned women, man. That's it. That's rouge. <laughs> physically when you put yourself the double whammy for me was I would I would go out on the roof right it would be it would be nighttime I would go out on the roof I would physically physically I'm on the roof putting myself in a position to where I'm feeling the vibe of wherever I'm at and when I when I lay them lyrics down on there and it, it just just the whole genre of the, of the atmosphere being right that's a double whammy right there man. That's the double whammy right there. Because I used to write rhymes and not even want to make sense, and it made sense. Like, I didn't intend to write it that way, and shit just comes out that way. Once you, once that shit come together like that, it's over, man. That's when you know you knock it out the park. When after you finish, you like, yeah, this is it right here. This is it right here. You know what I mean? So. That was the whammy for me, because I used to try to put myself in the zone. You had to put yourself there. You had to take yourself and put yourself someplace else. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it came to writing that mystical shit for me, I would put myself there. The visual, once you visualize it and put it down, and it, it comes out how you want people to see it, it's over, man. You, you always win that way. Always. You always win. All the time. You know what I'm saying? For me, that was winning for me. Let, letting people see what I saw when I wrote it. Made it and making it as, as vivid and visual as, as, as possible. You know what I mean? So that, that was very important for me. Yo, when we came in the place to be, I'm telling you, people was whispering, man, I go to cellar dwellers, you know what I'm saying? Because we used to, like, we used to do so much crazy shit, they used to wonder what we was going to do next. Like um, like one time we came in there, we both had these umbrella hats on. Crazy, we crushed that show. Then one time, we both had black Ku Klux Klan masks with the eyes cut out. That was the Biggie show. That shit was crazy. We came out with those. Budget Lord said, "My." Touching your pussy. She our best lyricist lounge joint was at the New Music Seminar when Craig G battled Supernatural. That was we did. That was the first night we did Duck Duck Goose that didn't make the album with Lord Have Mercy. 
we we crushed that show. We was crushing headlines. <laughs> Eighth grade, I was always one of those kids that were very like um, inquisitive, and I always asked the extra question about certain things because I wanted to learn a lot. You know what I'm saying? Or I was just interested in things. Period. History, whatever the case was. But when it came to science, that's when it was. Uh, that was like my favorite subject because there was so much to learn. You know, and I used to always ask the extra, extra question. I used to get in trouble for that. Like. Certain so teachers, they they wanted they they taught and whatever they told you, that was it. You know what I mean? It, it was it was kind of like they kept you in the box. So when you asked a question outside the box, you know, I was a nuisance to that man. I used to give them, I used to give them hell, man. Just but why is this? But why? Why? And they like, you'll learn that next week. I'm like, yo, I want to learn it now. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's where like the fantasy books and stuff kind of came into play. You know what I mean? Because that, it was just extra to me. It wasn't, although I know it wasn't real, it just was, it was satisfying to me because it was just another whole zone or another whole world. You know what I mean? And um, me and my man Q, this guy, my next door neighbor, like, he was going to school, you know what I mean? And doing the quantum physics thing and he put me on to it. We started reading books about quantum physics and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it kind of, it kind of, not only did it like broaden your vocabulary, but it, it broadened your mind to certain things, you know what I mean? So, I kind of knew how the geniuses felt because they always were searching for that extra, you know what I mean? That extra thing that, that proves that. So, if A says B, the B could say C and D. Let me find out how I could get to C and D. Probably like Coco Livio and shit like that. The game we used to play, it's like tag. But instead of you know, screaming out tag and shit, you would yell out Coco Livio three times. We used to run like used to be 20 of us running around here. Like manhunt, you know what I mean? Shit like that. And then six o'clock, lights would come on right there. Your ass had to be upstairs. And, and the, the, one of my father's memories here was it might have been like seven, but we was outside playing so crazy. Seven o'clock came, the lights came on, I ain't paying no attention to it. Here come my mother. Man, she used to yell so crazy, man. She used to scare my friends like, yo, shh, mother. So in these J's here, there was a lot of older people that they cared back then. Like now it's like, Back then, like, my mother's friend was outside and I was, wasn't supposed to be doing something. She was disciplined, like, yo, I'm taking you to your mother, you know what I mean? So, it's a lot of stuff, man. I did a lot of stuff out here, man. Skate, when I, I used to skateboard, I used to learn how to skate out here. Um, I did graffiti out here. Um, I ran around, man. I ran around out here. I love it. This was, this, this was the mecca of the learning experience for me. My man Stretch. Who does uh he does choreography for you know for uh 
Mariah Carey, he did the choreography for the Remember the Time Michael Jackson video. And I mean, my man Brutus Stretch, shout out Stretch. Um, he, we used to go to South Shore together. We used to go to high school together. And when the breakdancer came, he was down with this group called, um, oh, what was the name of these dudes? Well, it was him, my man Otis, this dude named, you know, it was a bunch of them. They used to break dance Coney Island. Mysterious Misfits? Yeah, rubber, rubber band. band, all of them. All of them was down together. All of them was down together. When I seen that shit, it was like, oh, oh shit. Like, so I'm in the crib practicing. And I, I got kind of nice. I was young. I mean, from with the older dudes, I was already nice. So I started learning that shit. And after the breakdance era, all that shit went through, I started, we started battling. I started crushing niggas with that. Some kid around his way wanted to battle or whatever the case was. Gage called me like, yo, because at that time they used to call, they called me Step Show at that time. Yo, Step Show, I want you to come battle this kid, put some money on the line, rah, 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 rah. So I said, what? Now mind you, it's, it's snowing, it's inches and inches and inches of snow, shit was snowing. So we went to some, it was a club on uh, Brooklyn Ave, I forgot, I forgot the name of it, but we went in there. That's where he set the battle up to be, so we went inside. Came in there, then the kid came and he was like, Oh, here he is, here he is. He came in there and shit, did his little bullshit move. I said, All right. So I had this one shit where I used to run up the wall and tuck backflip off the wall and do some crazy ground shit. And I did that. Fuck, club lost they fucking mind. Oh shit, he walked up the wall. We want our money. Gave me half, break me off my piece. <laughs> he took his piece. Oh, and I Escapism for me. Um, I mean, I, I I hate to say it, but uh, a lot of the, the like domestic stuff that went on in my house, a lot of things that I didn't agree with in life, it, it enabled me really to channel that that part of me and, and just take me in another place because I just didn't want to be around a lot of things that went on as a kid. Just enabled me and kind of forced me to get my brain to activate that way to take me away from that in order for me to be happy. And then when I come back to reality, it's like, oh. So then I just started getting good at taking myself there. You know what I mean? So um, 
that kind of was a plus for me because now when I write, I take myself there where people can't take they self. You know what I mean? So that's kind of an advantage. You know what I mean? So it's a double-edged sword. In one instance, it's bad that I had to do that because I, you know, I went through whatever I went through with family, whatever problems that I went through. It's bad that I had to take myself there. But then again, it worked out when it came down to me writing a story rhyme or just taking somebody there with a mystical rhyme. You know what I mean? It, it, that was, that made it easy for me. So it was a win-win for me, man. What do you want me to do? You know what I mean? It was a win-win, but um, that, that, was, that was really it for me. You know, that's what drove me to take it there, or take myself there. As soon as my son was born, that's when it that's when it really really became real. Soon as my son was born, that was it for me. There was no more me being selfish. There was no more me. I knew I had to be that man, that family man. You know what I mean? Um that was instant dad. So I just didn't want to be like my like my pops, like my pops left when I was when I was two. You know what I mean? I just didn't want to be like that. And then I promised my son, before he came out, while he was in my wife's stomach, I promised him that I would be like my father in no circumstance and leave when the going got tough or whatever it got rough or whatever the case was, I would never leave him. You know what I'm saying, and that's what made me, I got fathered a decade for that, two years in a row, you know what I mean? First is God, then it's my son, then it's my family.